Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. Each weapon in Monster Hunter is fantastic, and each takes a different approach, much like how different characters feel in a fighting game. In this video, I'd like to show you how I personally group them together, and let you know which weapons I feel that everyone can benefit from just by learning them at a basic level. The first grouping is what I call preemptive action. Being able to anticipate what a monster will do and what its ending position will be once it initiates an attack so that you can set up and exploit it. For this, we have the greatsword and the hammer. The next grouping I call reactive action. Being able to react to what a monster does as you continue your onslaught. You are playing aggressively but actively reacting when the monster attempts to hit you. In this group, I put the lance, gun lance, longsword, and bow. The next group is reflexive action. With a good enough understanding of safe zones and where a monster will be when it doesn't attack, you'll move between these zones and keep on the aggressive. You're generally not in the path of a monster's attack. For this, there's the Sword and Shield, Dual Blades, and Insect Glaive. Then there's Explosive Action. By using combos and powerful moves to flinch and stop a monster in its tracks, these weapons are best when it comes to using the knowledge of weapon mechanics to build up and unleash Holy Hell onto a monster. For these glory weapons, there's the Switch Axe and the Charge Blade. And then finally, there's a group which I call Strategic Action. For these weapons, they're kind of a mix of all the above, but due to their additional mechanics, you're thinking just as much about your hunter and what you'll do next, as you're thinking about the monster and what it'll do next. For this, I put the Light Bow Gun, the Heavy Bow Gun, and the Hunting Horn. Now, if there's a weapon that every player can benefit from just having the experience of playing it, it's the Greatsword and the Hammer. You don't have to master them, you don't have to play the entire game with them or anything, you just have to use them on a few monsters and get a feel for the rhythm, and you'll reap the benefits of having done so as you move forward, no matter which weapon you end up using. There are certain core concepts in the rhythm of Monster Hunter that these weapons rely on. At their core, they're also simplistic, so that they're relatively easy to pick up and mess around with. Simple to use, but hard to master as they like to say. The reason these two stick out is that they belong in what I call the preemptive action classification. For the other weapons, in order to counter well, understand and move around safe spots, exploit openings, or play strategically using timing and distance, you'll still need to understand the duration of each monster's attacks and what position they'll finish with at the end of those attacks as well. This is the very core of what Greatsword and Hammer teach you to observe. The best way to think of them is that they are hit and run weapons, meaning that you'll be moving around mid distance for most of the hunt, learning how to find the head of the monster so you can hit it and run away. Rinse and repeat. Both have charge attacks, so as you get good at hit and run, you'll start setting up your attacks a little bit earlier and preempting the monster's position in order to unleash powerful attacks. Depending on your playstyle and your disposition, either Greatsword or Hammer will be easier for you personally, so mess around with both to find out which one. Without giving you a full weapon tutorial, here are the tips on how to pick up the weapons and learn to observe with a preemptive mindset. Greatsword. Step 1. Hit and Run. This is simple, and it requires no armor skills and only one attack. Simply run around the monster with your weapon sheathed at mid and long distance and bait it into attacking you. Take notice of the duration and the ending position of each attack it does, pay attention if it turns around before it does its next move, and just look at where that head is going to be. Find an opportunity to land a smack to the head, then sheathe your weapon, rinse and repeat. For example, if a Rathian charges at you, she will always turn around to face you afterwards, so use that opportunity to smack her in the face. Greatsword, Step 2, Charge Hits You can actually kill most monsters pretty easy just using the Greatsword and the draw attack, but this will make your clear times much faster. Now that you know several opportunities to hit the face of the monster, try setting them up a second or two earlier. Just hold X during your draw attack and it'll charge the Greatsword. Don't worry about the charge level and only focus on timing for this exercise. Don't try charging to the maximum level because that's not really the objective here. It's just learning how to set up the attack earlier. Hit the monster, sheath, then repeat. Now there are a bunch of other moves that a greatsword can do which will bring you into intermediate and advanced usage, but the point of learning it at a basic level is to learn how to hunt preemptively. It's also worth noting that if you like and you want to continue to learn the greatsword, it's highly recommended to get the armor skill focus so that your attacks charge up faster. Hammer, Uppercut and Slam 
The hammer is more severe in terms of weapon reach, so it might be a good choice after messing around with the greatsword after a while. First, the moves you need to know. With your weapon out, hold R to start charging your hammer. You can move while you do this. Release after that first charge effect and you'll do a run-in uppercut. Release after the second charge effect and you'll do a wind-up slam. For this exercise, you'll need to stop and be stationary before you release that wind-up slam or you'll end up doing another move. With your weapon put away, you can draw into a charge by pressing R, X, and A at the same time, then just continue to hold R. You'll be running around the monster like the greatsword, and then preemptively before you have the opportunity to strike, you'll draw into a charge and then hit the monster with either the uppercut or the wind-up slam. After several hits to the face of the monster, you will knock it out. Walk over to its head and then press the X button three times. This will do two powerful hits and then a home run swing. The hammer has a few more moves of course that you'll want to use in intermediate and advanced stages, but just learning the uppercut and the slam is more than enough. Plus you'll also get the benefit of learning how status ailments build up. For example, the uppercut will greatly build up stun, and after a while it will KO the monster. If you use that slam attack, you'll be building up exhaust damage, which means that during the hunt, the monster will become exhausted and pretty much just stop moving, allowing you to simply walk up and start slamming it in the face with your hammer. And that's that. All the weapons in Monster Hunter are equally good, so it doesn't matter which one you use. If someone tells you otherwise, ignore them. In fact, I recommend that you try all of them at some point just to get an idea of what you like and what you don't. Now that you have the experience of using the great sword or hammer, you'll be able to use the other weapons better now that you have taken the time to learn the concept of watching a monster's patterns, finding the ending position, and how long it takes to get to it. Now go out there and whack some monsters around. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, happy hunting.